Well, it is early days, but it'll be interesting to see the results in August. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll do yeah. a catch-up on it. Um, with us now is one of the world's leading TMS experts or transcranial magnetic stimulation. His name's Dr. David Pitcher Hello. from the University of York. Welcome, David. Thank you. Great to see you. Now, apart from what we saw in the film there, what other illnesses is TMS being used then to treat? Or being, you know, you're doing the research into seeing how it can help other illnesses then? So if there's currently very promising work in depression, so people who are having, uh, people go and have TMS, they can, in combination with behavioral mm. therapy, they can feel better after that. Uh, we can also use it to predict people's recovery from strokes. And then the work that I do and my colleague Helen does is we actually use it to study the basic function of the brain. We say, what does area, this particular part of the brain do? And then if we can disrupt that, well, we know that that's causally essential for doing that particular function, say, recognizing a face or saying a word, that sort of thing. Right. right. OK, so what, what, what kind of proof have you got that this is actually working? Because there's machines like this all over Britain now. There are. There's every psychology con uh, department in the country would have one of these machines. It's a very um, interesting and compelling way to do neuroscience. And, yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. And the more and more research you do, David, obviously the more that the machine is going to be used for. So in the future, say five years from now, what do you hope you can achieve then with this piece of kit? The work I'm currently doing, I'm trying to understand how the brain goes wrong in autism, how the face areas that we have may misfunction in people. Mm -hmm. An autistic person will not look you in the face, so they will try and avoid making eye contact. So it's interesting to say, well, how does that face area not function properly in that autistic person? It's not that the TMS makes you autistic, but what we can do is we can study how that disruption may mirror behaviour that you would say an autistic person would do. OK, well, let's bring in your colleague now, who you mentioned there, Dr Helen Nuttall um, from UCL uh, Hospital. So it just, it just gives an idea of what's about to happen here, because you're going to do something with your arm and how, how it's going to interact with your brain. So across the top of my head is what's called my motor cortex. So all my motor function, just breathing, anything I'm doing as I'm moving my hands, is controlled by this part of my brain. It goes across the top of the head. And it's mapped onto the particular body functions, so we know that there's a part that controls the leg, part that controls breathing, part that mm -hmm. controls all your face, mm -hmm. and the part that controls the hand. And if we deliver TMS over, say, the part that controls the hand and the arm, we can absolutely make that not function. So right. the magnetic pulse will go through my skull, into the cortex underneath, the neurons in that part of the brain will fire. Rather than me controlling them, the TMS is effectively controlling them, and then it's going to make me shake, basically. Okay. Which, so you're going to hold your arm out like the go on, Jeff. Which way is the arm going to go? It's not... <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't want it. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Just that, OK. <laughs> if you'd like to restrain me, that's fine. I mean, you can try. Okay. OK. Helen, whenever you're ready. OK, so this is a TMS machine. I'm just going to place this coil on David's head, on his motor cortex, and just get lined up. And you'll hear some clicking noises and then the magnetic pulses. So if you'd like to start doing some action with your hand. OK, you ready? Here it goes. <gasps> Let's do that again. You ready, David? Yes. Really? And and you're, you're really trying to move your arm then. It yeah. just... I can't do it. The, the TMS has effectively taken over that part of my brain. It's not that it's making planned movements, it's just, it's like noise in the brain, mm. right? So it's just, there's, there's confusion in that part of the brain, so that part that controls my hand is suddenly going, I don't mm. know what I'm supposed mm. to do, that's why yeah. I'm shaking. And it's completely hands. safe, David, is it? It's completely safe. Um, it could cause a stroke in someone with a family history of yeah. epilepsy, so we never do it in people that have epilepsy. Mm. Okay, Fascinating brilliant. job you do. Yeah, thank you oh, so yeah. much, you, for both of you, for coming in. Thank you. Well, it's a busy week for our Jack here. Now, not only is he launching his new stand-up tour, he's also...